So this past weekend we had uh, public testing for the new Oryx 3 dungeon uh, for the boss fights and for the the Oryx's Sanctuary uh, dungeon overall. Uh, so I, I put in about four and a half hours to this testing session and I have a lot of thoughts about it and a fair amount of footage to go over. So this is a video that's going to just have post-commentary from me and some interesting points of gameplay to reflect what I'm saying. So hopefully this can be enlightening. I liked the dungeon overall, but uh, there were some obvious issues that I'm going to be able to illustrate with these clips, I think. Uh, so I started off with this archer that I had left over from a previous public testing session. Uh, you can see it's only 6-8 and doesn't have all the gear that we started with for this session. Um, but, you know, it's an archer, so it doesn't really need that much to be good. Uh, so I'm, I'm rushing past enemies here. You can see that uh, I don't really know what to do. I reach the gate, I turn back. Uh, I'm just kind of confused at this point because I don't know how to progress. Uh, eventually, for reasons that I didn't realize yet, the gate opened and I, I moved on. And, and I tried rushing through again. I was met with another gate and uh, ultimately I just got overwhelmed and died because I didn't know how to deal with these enemies at that point. So having died, I decided to just hop onto a priest to make my own life easier. So I got sort of distracted at the back of the group in this run, um, but it, it's here that we sort of encounter our first like game design problem for this dungeon. Uh, because when I arrived at the boss room, not really very late, uh, it was already closed. This is actually kind of a big deal, because it's supposed to be a group dungeon that follows the wine cellar, where you can take as long as you like. Uh, so it's very counterintuitive. It's easy to get locked out. So on the next run, I just made sure to get to the boss room on time, which wasn't all that difficult, all told. So finally, we're facing our first boss. Um, so here, here's the famous knives phase, or swords, for Dama. And uh, it is kind of easy, as people say, uh, but I think it could be pretty easily fixed by just giving them a higher projectile speed, honestly. So this next phase here is probably my favorite Dama phase. Uh, there's a lot of bullets on the screen. It's not that hard to dodge here. Uh, but it's kind of fun because it's all sort of tight dodging. Uh, so this phase is actually pretty cool. It's sort of a, a spokes phase as opposed to a tentacle phase because it moves at the same uh, rotational velocity at every distance from the boss. Uh, it was sort of the bane of my existence. I think it killed me every time I did it in a small group or solo. Uh, so at this point, I broke out the paladin for a moment, just because I had heard uh, sort of rumblings that some of the Oryx three phases were so intense that you couldn't survive without using Oreo. Ultimately, that turned out not to be true, but the point of this clip in this video is to illustrate uh, the soft lock that can occur if you kill the enemies incorrectly. So I swapped back off Pali basically right away uh, after dying in a void shortly thereafter. <laughs> At this point, I went Mystic for a bit, just to basically try and find if anything was stasisable. Spoilers, it wasn't. Um, and then in this clip, you can see me trying to rush again, because still at this point, I have not realized how this dungeon works. Uh, here you can see I'm using Warrior, just all reliable. Uh, I made it to Gemsbok as the uh, the second boss I encountered. Uh, so I, I was sort of surprised in this fight to see just how fast he really does teleport. It was frustrating trying to hit him at all in this fight. Uh, I swapped off ASS into Pixie just to have the higher fire rate in this class. Uh, 
Uh, just a random comment here. Uh, this petrify seemed like it lasted a really long time, um, but it didn't seem to serve the fight at all because I didn't feel like I was threatened on account of being petrified. I just felt like I had to wait in order to resume the fight. So I don't really know how the uh, the teleportation picking occurs, what what Spotty teleports to in this fight, but it was really frustrating in this in this fight because uh, it felt like he would never teleport to where I was, even though I felt like I was supposed to camp one of the spots. This coin phase is cool, but it seems kind of pointless. Um, because in this clip, I, I don't understand what's going on, but I just follow the lead of the other people in the dungeon. Uh, but in all subsequent Gemsbok fights that I did, uh, it was really easy to follow the coin. So it, it's just a free damage phase for no reason. If you watch this clip closely, you can see that Gemsbok dies before I do. So uh, if you're keeping score, I win this interaction. Uh, so I swapped to Necro, just for safety and comfort. Uh, make it to uh, a, a new mini-boss once more, Lucorix. Uh, it's cool. Uh, <laughs> those, um, those Sunbeam 3D objects look really weird. So of the three available mini-bosses in this dungeon, I would say that this one is definitely the weakest one. Uh, Dama being the strongest in terms of identity. Uh, I kind of just hung out in this fight, and then nothing happened, and I never felt threatened, and eventually we won and moved on. Simple as that. Uh, so thanks to Luke Oryx being such a chump, uh, we were finally able to move on, and I saw O3 for the first time, which was exciting. So right off the bat, I, uh, I really liked this... Uh, dynamic of destroying these statues in order to make him more and more vulnerable uh, and having to come back to that throughout the fight. I thought that was a fun mechanic, and it wasn't very intrusive. So I noticed that O3 has really long vulnerability periods. Uh, so I guess in this clip, it's uh, part of the stagger encounter mechanic, uh, but still, even for that, it seems like quite a long time. Uh, unfortunately, I got sort of a lame conclusion to my first uh, showdown with O3 because uh, I guess Lord Ruthven stepped in because I got a bunch of lag and I got kicked off the server. Uh, it was, it was, the servers were pretty unstable for the, the first bit on the testing of this. So my next attempt, you can see, wound up being a, a solo attempt with that same necromancer. Uh, so I was sort of treating it like a shatters, and I was slowly dragging back each enemy and killing them individually for safety's sake. Turns out that's a mistake, but, I mean, honestly, how was I supposed to know? Eventually, after killing every enemy in the entire area, I went up to the door, assuming it would be open, and it wasn't. Uh, so I sort of looked around, and I was confused, and eventually I turned to Discord and asked them what the hell was going on. Uh, and the people in the Realm of the Mad God Discord told me, actually, you have to kill the enemies next to the door. If they're too far away, they don't count, and you can't open the door by killing them. Which is just the most frustrating mechanic of all time. Uh, so, so I reset, uh, decided to try again at the solo, and uh, so my new approach had to be that I would go really deep and ensure that the enemies died near the door. Which is not really the playstyle Necromancer is suited to, but it's testing, so I decided just to just let it die this way. Uh, ultimately, I was surprised at how far I made it, actually, as Necromancer. I made it to the final door before the boss, um, before I got overwhelmed. Uh, and when I did, I actually nexus instinctively, instead of letting it die like the plan was. So that Necromancer died on the next go-round anyway, so <laughs> no harm done, I suppose. Uh, it served its purpose well. Uh, at this point, I decided that probably Paladin was going to be my best bet in terms of this playstyle of going deep and staying deep and surviving that be by being bulky. Um, <laughs> turns out it really wasn't. Um, so this next bit of the video is essentially just going to be a montage of me dying over and over on Paladin, failing to do this properly.
uh, yeah, so that was basically a complete failure. Uh, so afterwards, I decided to try something a little different and use Trickster <laughs> in order to redirect the enemy so that they didn't all pile on top of me all the time. Uh, and this worked much better. I have made it to the mini boss on only my second attempt. Uh, I found the Dama fight to be really actually even more fun as Trickster, because Trickster basically has the tools to deal with what Dama does without like actually negating the mechanics in the way that like group tanking or purification would. It was really fun. Uh, one thing I realized partway through this fight, as you can see in this clip here, is uh, you can hop the wall back into the hallway before the fight uh, with the teleportation ability. Uh, this is definitely something that ought to get patched. I abused it a few times to cheese a few phases, if I'm honest. Uh, so you can see here that I, I pushed him to the spokes phase again, and once more I died horribly quickly. Uh, another gamma fight. In this case, I messed up the initial swords phase pretty badly, um, but as you can see, the, the, the danger level is just kind of not there, because... I, I was never really scared of dying, and I was fine as soon as I started focusing. Uh, and this time I got two very nice volunteers to uh, finish the spokes phase for me so that I could move on and uh, try O3 again. One thing I will say about the O3 fight is that uh, in the initial phases, basically nothing seems all that threatening, to be quite honest. Uh, there needs to be sort of two things going on at once for there to be any sort of pressure, um, which makes the first half of the fight feel like kind of a waste of time. Uh, despite myself, I kind of like this phase here. It, uh, it looks cool, and it's kind of fun to dodge. Um, not that it's that dangerous, but I, I do like it. Uh, and so here we get my first time experiencing uh, Exalted Oryx Transition. Uh, I got kind of overexcited and uh, basically died instantly. Uh, so I swapped from Trickster to Rogue at this point uh, because I figured it'd be easier to manage minions this way on the way to boss, and I was interested in seeing how the boss has responded to Invisible, but uh, I actually started going in bigger groups starting at this point, so I, I probably should have just stuck with Trickster. In this first case, though, uh, it was kind of fun, because I wound up uh, in a situation where I was soloing O3. Um, so I had some interesting experiences with that, as you'll soon see. So if you watch in this clip, uh, you can see he raises a sword like he's about to do his, his, his slash attack, um, but then he actually doesn't do anything because I'm invisible. Um, and this is going to be a theme through the next few clips where he actually really doesn't attack very much for an invisible opponent. So I actually kind of view this uh, invisibility advantage as kind of a big deal and a bad thing. Uh, you know, despite giving Rogue a use in the end game for the first time in forever, um, just having this dynamic doesn't work with Oryx 3 because he has timed phases. So if there's easy phases and hard phases, and you can just wait for the easy phases, it's not a fun fight.
I mean, look at this clip. Uh, he's a total piñata here, and this is soloing the hardest boss in the game. It shouldn't be this way. Uh, so then after the Exalted transition, I got the Exalted version of my favorite phase, which is this sort of Skyfall phase. Um, so I was having some fun running around the edge of the room. I put myself in a bad position, and then when Orcs jumped on top of me, I sort of didn't know what to do, and I died. So my genius leeching strategy for the spoke phase at Dama didn't work for a second time uh, because the people who were completing it died, and then I followed suit. Uh, so this is kind of a fun little bullet hell moment, this phase here. Uh, I think I would have had an easier time of it with more range, um, but as it stands, it, it was sort of fun. It was like... I was getting chipped down, and every shot that hit me was fair. And then eventually, you know, I died. Um, but I didn't feel bad about it. It was, it was, it was cool. I kind of feel like the uh, Oryx 3 boss room is a little too big, actually, um, because if I can just sort of comfortably hang out on the other side of the room from him uh, in most phases, which is unlike most other endgame bosses, uh, for the worse, I think. Uh, I gotta say, the uh, the Oryx 3 dance phase is kind of a letdown, uh, personally. After I heard that he was going to be sort of moving around and chasing during the dance, it seemed exciting. Um, but it just feels way less high pressure than Oryx 1 or Oryx 2 dances. Uh, here's kind of a fun Oryx 3 moment. Uh, sort of, I, I got in a bad position. I sort of got low on health and stayed low because of the, the pet stasis pressure. Uh, and I wound up actually having to use HP pots in order to recover, which was a nice change of pace from the way other endgame dungeons work. Uh, and then sort of anticlimactic death, I rotated around a pet stasis blaster. Uh, so sort of amusingly, in the next run here, I got trapped behind the uh, the closed off boss doors uh, twice, once for Gemsbok and once for Oryx. Uh, luckily, uh, the uh, the prefab rogues come with the plane walker, so I could continue without an issue. Uh, another funny jank moment with the uh, the boss doors. Oryx was stuck aggroed on someone who was outside the boss room. So he was just stuck against a wall, just getting shot for a minute there. Uh, I thought this clip here would be an illustration of how O2's chase phase is scarier than O3's, because it's harder to recover. Uh, so I thought that was strange. Uh, this is sort of a, a suggestion of how to modify the O3 fight a bit. I feel like these red scarabs should have a higher radius on their pulses, because they don't control enough area currently. Uh, so here we get O3's famous desperation move. Um, it's really cool. Unfortunately, I got totally destroyed by it in this clip. This is a fun little triple kill that O3 got with his little initial wobbly phase. 
Uh, so here I tried to rotate with the desperation phase in order to minimize my encounters with Oryx. Uh, didn't quite work. Uh, this time I made it much further. Uh, still didn't survive, but in this case I'm not really sure how I died based on the footage. I have a tendency of walking into O3's shotgun here, but luckily it's not as lethal as O2's. And here is yet another valiant attempt at the desperation phase. Uh, again, doesn't quite go perfectly, but I, I'm, I'm happy with this performance here. <laughs> And here's a non-desperation death that happened right after, just to mix things up a bit. Uh, so I was going to keep going until I successfully beat O3, uh, but unfortunately I lagged out again and just decided, fuck it, for the rest of the day, and then I didn't realize how soon the testing server was closing. All right, see ya.